If there's one thing every truck driver expects from a truck, it's that it lasts, that it runs without serious problems, at least for the first 50,000 miles. But that's not always what happens. Today, we're going to talk about models that disappointed. Trucks that, even with big name brands up front, ended up marked by chronic issues, high maintenance costs, and early breakdowns. It's no exaggeration to say some of these trucks became the subject of lawsuits, financial losses, and drivers stuck on the side of the road. This list is based on user reports, maintenance records, specialized forums, and technical data. The goal here isn't to bash any brand, but to warn those who rely on their trucks and can't afford to make a bad purchase. So, if you're thinking about investing in a used truck or want to understand why certain models disappeared from the market so fast, stick around. By the end, the information you find here might just save you from a serious headache down the road. The Cummins ISX has always been a respected engine among American truckers, known for its torque, power, and presence in major highway truck models. However, the CM871 version, launched to meet the 2007 EPA emission requirements, brought a series of problems that damaged its reputation during that period. The main culprit of the CM871 was the combination of the EGR, exhaust gas recirculation, and DPF, diesel particulate filter systems. The EGR, which recirculates a portion of the exhaust gases back into the intake to reduce nitrogen oxides, caused excessive soot buildup in the system. Over time, this led to clogging, increased temperatures, and premature wear of internal components. The DPF, designed to capture soot particles before they exit the exhaust, relied on constant regenerations, a process where the system heats the filter to burn off accumulated residues. The problem? Regenerations often failed or didn't occur properly, resulting in engines stuck in limp mode, loss of power, and long maintenance downtime. In addition, electronic failures in sensors, control modules, and actuators were also common, further increasing driver frustration. The main truck models affected by this engine include Kenworth T660, Peterbilt 386, Freightliner Cascadia, all widely used in interstate fleets where reliability is critical. Due to the high complaint rate and difficulty keeping these engines running without interruptions, Cummins retired the CM871 in 2010, replacing it with the CM2250, which introduced SCR, Selective Catalytic Reduction, and the use of DEF, Diesel Exhaust Fluid, a solution that proved more efficient and less prone to chronic failures. Although the ISX name continued, the CM871 version is remembered as one of Cummins' most problematic phases and is still avoided by many buyers in the used truck market today. Navistar Max Force 13, 2007 to 2015. The Navistar Max Force 13 might be one of the most problematic engines in the recent history of heavy duty trucks in the United States. Released as an innovative solution to meet EPA emission standards, it ended up becoming a real nightmare for those who bought it. Navistar's big gamble was insisting on an emissions control system based solely on EGR, exhaust gas recirculation, without using DF fluid, AdBlue, which competitors like Cummins and Detroit Diesel had already adopted. The idea looked good on paper, but in practice, it was a disaster. The problems were numerous, clogged EGR systems, constant regenerations, overheating, block cracks, warped cylinder heads, and chronic oil leaks. Many truck drivers report that the engine spent more time in the shop than on the road. The main affected models were the International Pro Star, Transstar, and Lone Star, all equipped with the Max Force 13 between 2007 and 2015. The losses were so significant that Navistar lost market share, faced a series of lawsuits, including class action suits, 
and eventually abandoned its own heavy-duty engine development. Today, the brand uses Cummins engines as standard in its lineup. This is a clear example of how a poorly calculated technical decision can damage the reputation of an entire brand. Ford 6.0 liter, Power Stroke, 2003 through 2007. The 6.0 liter Power Stroke engine, developed by Navistar and used in the Ford F250 through F550 Super Duty lines, is one of the most well-known examples of how an engine can ruin the trust of an entire generation of drivers. At first, it promised more power and torque compared to its predecessor, the 7.3 liter. And on paper, it did deliver better performance. But this technical upgrade came with a series of serious flaws. Among the most common problems were chronic oil leaks, frequent failures in the electronic injection system, overheating, and cylinder heads that warped easily especially under heavy load or higher temperatures. Additionally, the EGR system also caused constant headaches. The result? Extremely high maintenance costs, loss of reliability, and a legion of dissatisfied owners. Many ended up installing delete kits or even completely replacing the engine to avoid even bigger losses. The impact was so negative that Ford and Navistar entered legal battles and the 6.0-liter engine was eventually replaced by the 6.4-liter, which, ironically, also had its own problems. Today, the 6.0-liter Power Stroke is remembered by many mechanics as a classic example of an engine that couldn't make it 100,000 miles without headaches, something unacceptable for vehicles designed for heavy-duty work. Caterpillar C15, 2004-2009, for decades, Caterpillar was synonymous with reliability and durability in the diesel engine industry. However, the introduction of the C15 with ACERT technology marked a turning point that many considered the beginning of the brand's decline in the highway truck market. ACERT technology, advanced combustion emissions reduction technology, was Caterpillar's response to EPA emission standards in the 2000s. But what was meant to be an environmental solution turned into a mechanical nightmare. The variable valve actuation VVA systems introduced in the engine frequently failed. Overheating was constant and fuel consumption increased significantly. Contrary to expectations of improved efficiency, additionally, the C15A CERT required more frequent and specialized maintenance. This resulted in high operating costs and a significant loss of reputation among truck drivers and fleet owners. Among the affected models were the Peterbilt 379 and 387, Kenworth W900 and T800, and the Freightliner Classic. All trucks widely used for long haul and heavy duty service. Owner frustration was so widespread that many sought alternative replacements or even swapped back to earlier engines. The impact was so severe that in 2010, Caterpillar decided to exit the on-highway market entirely, ending production of engines for highway trucks and focusing on industrial and off-road applications. Today, the C15A CERT is remembered as an example of how good technical intentions can fail in practice leaving behind a legacy of unexpected expenses and low reliability. Mercedes-Benz MBE 4000 The MBE 4000 was Daimler's attempt to enter the North American medium and heavy truck engine market, aiming to compete with the already dominant Detroit diesel engines in the region. Despite Mercedes-Benz's strong European pedigree, the engine faced a series of issues that negatively impacted its acceptance. One of the biggest challenges for the MBE 4000 was recurring failures in the turbochargers, a crucial component for maintaining efficiency and power in modern diesel engines. Problems like leaks, premature wear, and mechanical failures led to performance loss and frequent maintenance. Additionally, the engine struggled with limited access to replacement parts in the United States, 
which prolonged vehicle downtime and increased costs for fleet operators and independent drivers. Another critical issue was low reliability under severe conditions, especially in hot climates and heavy usage, common on routes in the southern U.S. and Mexico. The engine did not hold up well to long hauls with heavy loads, resulting in accelerated wear and premature failures. Trucks that use the MBE 4000 include Freightliner Columbia Sterling, a 9500. Both models are widely used for medium and long haul trucking, but saw their performance affected by the engine's instability. Due to these problems and the growing dominance of Detroit diesel engines, Daimler decided to discontinue the MBE 4000 in the North American market, focusing efforts on developing and improving Detroit engines, which still dominate the on-highway segment today. As a result, the MBE 4000 became an unpopular choice, especially for those seeking durability and low maintenance costs in heavy-duty work trucks. These engines we covered today aren't just examples of failed technology, they're clear reminders of how evolving environmental standards and market demands directly impact the reliability and performance of trucks. Many of these power plants brought important innovations, but they also caused high costs, constant maintenance headaches, and a lot of frustration for the people who rely on them every day. Whether it was the complexity of emission systems, critical component failures, or just difficulty adapting to the heavy-duty road conditions, these engines ended up falling behind, leaving the market and valuable lessons for manufacturers, fleet owners, and all of us following the industry. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss upcoming content, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell. And I want to know, have you ever dealt with any of these engines or know someone who's had a headache because of one? Drop your stories in the comments. Thanks for watching all the way through, and I'll see you in the next video.